In the olden days, when I got saved, no, that was in 2001, and it actually was Bishop Freddy who was preaching in Victory Galleria, I vividly remember that the center or that worship hall had this huge, well, I think in 2001, wala pa naman mga LED no, no? It was just, um, uh, it was just yung plain, no? Plain backgrounds. And... Uh, I'd like to, to show you a picture of what I saw in Victory Davao the other day. No? This is a picture of Victory Davao. Uh, na, in the entrance, no, I think it's there. Um uh, Wala dyan, okay. So, yan po si Bishop Ferdi. No? So, um, there's this picture in Victory Davao where you would see, no, there's just this big image. It says, Jesus, period. No, nakalagay doon, Jesus period. Can we just show our series title, no? Jesus period. And the reason why this was the main image of most of the churches, I visited Cebu, it was Jesus period. In all the victory churches that we used to go, how many of you remember that? There was this big image, it, was, it just says Jesus period. Naalala niyo pa ba yun? Jesus period was not a campaign, it was not a slogan, it was not a seasonal thing, but it actually represented who we are in Christ. Ano ba ibig sabihin ng Jesus period? It actually meant that everything that we do as people of God is based on Christ. Everything that we do, we offer to Him and nobody else. It was actually a reminder that life as a believer was never just about us. And I like this series and I like this image because it brings us back to what truly matters. It's all about Jesus, period. We can actually do a lot of things, but it might not be for Christ. And this series would allow us to go back to who we really are. And it's all about Christ. Amen? Amen. Jesus is Lord and that, it's, that is what it actually means. And so as we talk about this series, Jesus Period, I'd like to ask you this question. It's easy to say that Jesus is Lord. Yes or no? Yes. Nali naman, di ba? Jesus is Lord. But the question that we need to answer is, is Jesus Lord of my life? Who is the Lord of our lives? Because if it's not Christ, definitely it's someone else. It can be us. It can be someone who speaks. Ko ano sabihin niya, yun ang masusunod. But as people and faithful followers of Jesus, this is who we are. Jesus calls the shots. And so I'd like to ask this question not only today, but for the next four weeks as we go through this series. And this is a very important question. And this is the question. I hope you try to take note of this. It's not up there. I want you to write it down. And this is the question that I would like to answer every week for the next four weeks. Why is Jesus worthy to be the Lord of our life? Why is Jesus worthy of him being the Lord of my life, of your life? We're going to go through the book of Colossians for the next four weeks. It has four chapters, so we're going to go through chapter one today. We're going to select a, a, a smaller passage. And as we go through the book of Colossians, ang prayer ko, you go through it also during the week. No, It might be a good devotion for you, the book of Colossians. And today, we're going to read a passage of scripture from verse 9 to verse 14, and as we go through these verses, I'd like you to, uh, it might not be in your Bible, this version, because this is the NASB version, but I'd like you to um, read what is on the screen, and I'm going to read it, and then we're going to pray. We're going to try to answer, why is G Jesus worthy to be the Lord of our lives? Verse 9, for this reason, we also, since the day we heard about it, have not ceased praying for you and asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so that you will walk in a manner worthy of the Lord to please him in all respects, bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, 
for the attaining of all perseverance and patience, joyously giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. For he rescued us from the dominion of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Lord, speak to us on what it is to actually have Jesus as the Lord of our lives. Panginoon, Panginoon, kausapin mo kami kung ano ba ang ibig sabihin nito sa aming mga buhay. Ano ba ang Lordship, Lord? And why is it such an important concept for us? Lord, mangusap ka sa aming mga sitwasyon, in our marriages, in our work. How are you a Lord in our business? How are you the Lord of our uh, of our relationships? Lord, how are you the Lord in our money? In every aspect of our lives, minister to each and every one of us. Lord, even comfort us during this time as we mourn together as a church. Salamat, Lord. We lift you up today. Lord, thank you that your work will be done through your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay. So as we try to unpack the book of um, Colossians. This is a very important starter of our series. We will try to uh, give you a, a better understanding of the book of Colossians. No? And I know you are sad. Kitang-kita ko po, no? Tap the person there. Sabi mo, boy si Lord. Okay, okay yan. Okay lang. So, the book of Colossians is a book where you have Paul, the writer of this letter, to the Colossae Church. You have to understand the Colossian Church or the Colossae Church was not planted by Paul. It was planted by a disciple of Paul and his name is Epaphras. Now, can you say that with me? Epaphras. So Epaphras was a leader who went home probably to his place called Colossae and when he was there, he started to disciple the people around him and all of a sudden, now it is a small church. This church was growing, this church was flourishing, they were learning about the word, they were getting deep in the word. It was a very young church. It was described, if you open your Bibles and you look at the first few verses of chapter 1, it was described as a church that loved the people around them. Ganun po ang mga tao ng Panginoon. No? Look at the person to your right. Mukha ba siyang kaloving-loving? No? Yung, yung talagang pag nakita mo, mahal ka na. Yung ganun, no? yung nakasmile. Not only were they loving, they were also people of hope. Yung pag nakita mo, laging may pag-asa. Ayan. Look at the person to your left, no? Mukha bang may pag-asa. No? May pag-asa sa'yo. Ayan. No? They were growing in the Lord. No? I read this, um, uh, N.T. Wright has this uh, devotional book. It's in, it's in all the books and all the verses of the Bible. And I like that he introduced Colossians as if, ganito daw yung itsura. Imagine there's a old house. Somebody bought an old house. Sabi niya, no? he bought an old house. And in that house, there is a garden at the back. Alam niyo yung garden na napabayaan, no? sira na yung mga halaman, wala na. No? And the right would describe the book of Colossians as if this garden now has planted new seeds. And these seeds would actually grow. And ngayon, gumaganda na yung mga halaman. Unfortunately, just like any garden, you know that as beautiful at is, at, as, as it grows, meron pa rin mga weeds and bushes that would actually kill the roots of the new plants. This was the, conf the, this was the concern of this church uh, leader called Epaphras. He went to Paul in prison, pinuntahan niya si Paul, and he was asking for advice. What do I do to deal with the pressures of this church? What were the challenges of this church? You have to understand, they were growing. No? Gupaganda yung church. They were, they were meeting together. They were studying the word together. Nagpa-flourish in church. And then, ito na. There was a concern. Two pressures that they encountered that we will see 
as we go along in the coming weeks. Sabihin ko na sa inyo, no, para may lagi kayong may context for the next four weeks. The first pressure that they encountered is this. Colossae, just like any city that is conquered by Rome, had a lot of gods. Okay? They were polytheistic in their belief. They had a god for something. They had a god for, uh, for the rain. They had the god for uh, relationships. They, they had so many gods. And now, these believers, as now they receive Christ, ito po yung first challenge. He was just like the other gods. Same lang sila. That was the challenge. Yes, they were growing in the faith. Yes, they learned about Christ. But at the same time, there was this tendency to still continue to follow the other gods. That was the first concern. Second concern, as you know, all churches are mixed kind of people. So there were Gentiles and Jews in this church called Colossae. The second concern was the Jewish believers were telling the Gentile believers that yes, Jesus is your Lord, but at the same time, you need to do this and this and this to be able to really be people of God. The concern was not only external, it was also internal. A new church, a new thriving church going through Issues of pressure and they were worried, not only si Epaphras, Paul was also concerned that this might stagnate the growth of the church. I'll try to put it in our terms. No? Ako, I remember I, I got saved in 2001 and I was already uh, 20 years old. Okay? So imagine, no, I was already 20 years old, and in 2001, I got saved. When I received Christ as my Lord and Savior, I was not able to denounce or not follow the other things that I do. Ganun po yung sitwasyon. Gets nyo ba? So, sinasamba ko si Jesus, but at the same time, I was also doing what others were doing, No? Meron akong kaibigan, sabi niya, swerte yung ganito, ginagawa ko din. So, gets nyo ba yun? Yung, nag, in Jesus' name, amen, tas may iniikot akong beads. Parang gano'n, no? Yung parang sinasabay, yung, gets nyo ba? Yung smudge patch ng lahat. That was the concern of Paul. And so, I also remember that I grew up as a Catholic. And so, there were parang mix and match of the learnings that I was doing as a Catholic. And now, as I was a believer. I remember that I would go up to Galleria in Victory, I think that was at the third floor, and worship Jesus, but at the same time, I would go down sa church. No? Yung talagang after ng Sunday, feeling ko ang puti-puti ko. Yung, yung talagang parang umaangat ka na sa holiness mo, di ba? This was the concern of this church. And so the question is, how does Paul try to, how does he deal with this concern of pressure, of outside pressure, and also internal pressure? Meron mga, may mga Christians in their midst, no? Siguro kung bago kayong Christian, meron mga nagsasabi sa inyo, oh, dahil ng church ka na, kailangan gawin mo to, gawin mo to, gawin mo to. Parang may mga requirements. How does Paul bring them back no? to the Jesus period? What does he do so that they will continue to grow as a church. Now we go through the text. In verse 9, he says, For this reason, we also, since the day we heard about it, your concern, we have not stopped praying for you. That's the first thing he does. He continually prays for what? He does not pray that they get delivered from their challenges, but he prays, and this was the prayer, for you that you may be filled with the knowledge of God's will. This was the first thing that Paul says. Sabi ni Paul, I will continually pray for you that you will know the will of God. That is one important aspect so that they will continue to grow in the Lord. Why was it important for them to continually know more of Jesus, okay? Uh, uh, ako magsasabi ha, pagka uh, kailangan nyo nang i-ano yung slide, no? Let's go back to the text. Why does Paul want them to continually know his will? Pag-isipan nyo yun. Why was it important for them to continually 
know His will. Nisip ko yun, no? Bakit nga ba importante na makilala si Lord? The more that we seek the will of God, the more that we try to know what He is and who He is and His promises, alam nyo ba, the more that we will also get to know Him and want to be with Him. This was the priority of Paul. That's why he was saying, whenever you know the will of God in your life, you will have understanding and wisdom. Ano ibig sabihin nun? You would see this in the letters of Paul, that two words always together. Understanding and wisdom. In the world they lived in, same as the world you live in today, there is so much understanding and wisdom that the world is giving you. To be honest, we listen to it, and sometimes we even follow it. The wisdom of the world is such a powerful wisdom that even us, we are drawn to it. And that's why he was bringing them back. Sabi niya, this is what you should fill yourself with. It's the wisdom of God. Kaya alam niyo, ito ha, sabihin ko lang sa inyo, kaya ang daming naloloko. Alam niyo, da- na-scam na ba kayo before? Sana hindi, di ba? Yung alam mo yung namumblema ka at sabi may magte-text sa'yo, loan. Ang ganaman yung parang, o oh, sige, maglo-loan na lang ako kahit hindi ko kailangan. No? Parang, so, why am I saying that the wisdom of God is such an important thing to fill our minds? I'd like you to focus on that word, no? Fill them with God's knowledge. This is what he was saying. Fill them with God's knowledge. I'd like you to understand this by giving you a perspective. Again, when I got saved, I was already 20 years old. It was 2001. For 20 years of my life that I did not know Jesus as my Savior, you have to understand, lahat po ng wisdom ng mundo nasa utak ko. I know how to respond pag may problema. Ganito lang yan. Tawagan ko lang si Charles. Uutangan ko lang yan. I know how to respond from the world's wisdom. Why? Kasi ito yung sabi ng nanay ko pag may problema. Ito yung sabi ng classmate ko na mayaman na pag kami problema, ganito gagawin. We are filled with so much wisdom of the world that unless we fill it with the wisdom of God, we will always think like the world. Ang buhay po natin, pag di natin binago ang nasa isip natin, kahit na si Lord ang Savior natin, ang response natin, makamundo pa din. This is what Paul was saying. First, I pray that you fill your minds with the wisdom of God. And the more that we fill our minds of the wisdom of God, I, I hope you know that our brains has a capacity May capacity po yan. That when it is filled already with new, it will actually remove the old. No, may mga bagay na hindi natin kailangan itago sa... Alam nyo, gets nyo ba yung kung saan ako nanggagaling? No? Parang, I think there is that... We have... I'll, 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 I'll slow down a bit. Baka na-excite lang ako. Netflix. How many of you watch Netflix? Raise your hand. How many of you are watching Netflix right now as you listen to the preaching? <laughs> Sana wala. Okay. So, there are seasons in my work as a minister, meron din naman kaming mga breaks. So, and I'm also studying now. No? Nag-aaral po ako. So, dahil I'm, st- I'm taking up my master's, there are pockets of break. That pag may pocket of break na two days, babalik ako mag-net. Alam mo mag-netflix? Ay, yung, eto na. Yung sabi ni pa, manunod ako ng isa lang. Isa, isa lang? Isa lang. Isang upuan, isang series. Na-try nyo na ba yun? Yung... <laughs> na-try nyo na yun. Yung talagang... Meron akong time. Ang pinapanood ko was a... Si Apa kasi may kasalanan nito. He recommended this. Ano. Ay, ang ganda nito, panoorin mo. So, pinanood ko. Alam nyo ba, the next situation that I entered, ang response ko, gusto ko parang mafia yung response ko. Ganito lang yan. What comes in our minds would actually determine how we think. How what we usually watch 
would actually come out of the way we respond. Nakakatawa, no? Ang medyo nakakatawa pero nakakatakot na. Minsan nag-uusap lang kami, magkakakura. Nag-uusap tayo, bro. Kami ni uh, Verhel, nag-uusap kami. Kunwari, oh, bro, um, yung ano, nakita mo mga yung mga say ko ngayon? Oh, ang ganda. Napansin ko yung phone ko after noon, puro say ko. Napansin nyo ba yun? Nakikinig. Kaya tinapong ko yung cellphone ko, eh. Naka-5110 na lang ako ngayon, no? Nakikinig. And because this is what we say, napansin nyo, yun na yung feed ninyo. Gets nyo ba? Kaya tiga mo, pagka, kung rin, oh, sure, imagine, no, kung tayo yung church na, surrender your phone, I will check what's on your feed. Parang nakakatakot. No? When you see it, no, parang it, these are the things that are consuming our minds. These are the things that are consuming our mind. And I'd like you to I'd like to give you a, one example and I'm being very vulnerable with you guys. Ang theme po natin here in Victor Green Hills is less of me and more of God this year, no? How do we become less of ourselves and more of God? And I've been trying to really apply this in my Lord, less of me. And I realized that less of me was not buying less. Akala ko it was buying less. So nag po kami, me and uh, my wife. And so ultimately, pag nag ka, anong bibilin mo? Siyempre, gusto mo ng souvenir dun sa pinuntahan mo. And ang souvenir po in my mind, rubber shoes. Di ba? Yun ang souvenir, di ba? Yung, ah, ito, suot ko na siya, souvenir to. Karang gano'n. And so sabi ko, dung, the last trip, mura ang rubber shoes dun. Kasi parang green hills eh. <laughs> so mura yung rubber shoes dun. Alam niyo ba, sobrang proud na proud ako. Kaya mayabang talaga ako, di ba? Proud ako eh. Sobrang proud ako na hindi ako bumili ng rubber shoes. Tapos sabi ng mami ko, anong binili mo? Wala. Alam mo sabi ng mami ko? Iba niyo siya kay Pam. Totoo. Wala, wala siya binili. Grabe, baka. Tapos ako, yeah. It's less of me eh. But I realized that I could actually deny myself of buying things, deny myself of not being consumed by uh, responding to the world's invitation of buying more things for us. I realized that that might be true, but if my heart is still away from God, it's still the same. Kung hindi pa rin si Lord <laughs> ang nananaig, dinidefine ko lang yung sarili ko from buying something, I believe there's still something wrong with my heart. I have a question. What is our mind filled with today? What's occupying most of our minds? And I'm not talking about just material things. But even in challenges, is it is what is occupying your mind? Is it the problems ang punong-puno ang mind natin? Alam nyo, the more that we fill our minds with the Word of God, the more that we fill our minds with the promises of God, when you go through a challenge, what comes to your mind? It's the promise of God not leaving us, never forsaking us. Wala po tayong huhugutin na promise ni Lord if wala ring pumapasok na Word ni God. I'd like to emphasize on that. Sabi niya, be filled with the knowledge of His will, God's will. And it is wisdom and understanding. Do you know that as people of God, all wisdom and understanding leads to one person? And that is Christ. This is what Paul was saying. Fill your minds of Christ. Fill your minds of knowing Christ. Do you want to continually grow in your faith? Ito yung challenge niya sa Colossae Church. I pray that ang priority niyo is to feel and know more about Christ. We are called to know more about Christ. Continually know more about Christ. In the time that you have in a day, you can actually consume, how much time do you sleep? Five to seven hours. You work eight hours. You travel an hour. How much of your 24 hours is given to knowing more of God? 
continually know more about Christ. You want to know why that's important? Do you want to know why? Yes? Yes? Because it's difficult to submit to follow God if you don't know Him. Pag di nyo kilala si Lord, feeling nyo, ako din, feeling ko, pag di ko kilala si Lord, feeling ko, mi, yung inaano ka, yung, oh, gawin mo to, gawin mo to. Pero when you know God, you will know that it is for you. <laughs> Para sa atin naman yun eh. And that's why it's important not only to know more about God. Verse 10, Paul also says, second thing, is to walk in the manner worthy of the Lord. Walk in the manner worthy of the Lord is dependent to the previous one. Sabi niya, so that the more we know about Christ, the more we will be able to walk in His ways. Lordship is about walking in the ways of the Lord. And it's about pleasing Him. No, The reason why we obey the Word of God is so that we can please God. We live in a world today, to be honest, and I want to say this, as your past pastor who loves you, we live in a world where it's about pleasing ourselves. It's all about us. It's all about, Lord, kailan mo bibigay ito? Lord, gusto ko ito. Kailan mo ba bibigay sa akin ito? As if the verse says, walk in the manner of the Lord so that the Lord can please us. The Bible is clear. Our lives are not only meant to know Christ, but to walk in His ways. I like yung walk in a manner. No? The, walk, the word walk there is, in Hebrew, it actually describes your daily lives. It's not a walk on Sunday when you go here. It's not a walk when you just open your Bibles. It's actually in everything you do. I want to challenge you, as you go through this series, reflect on this question. Am I walking with Jesus in every part of my life? In my marriage? Kasama ko ba si Lord dun? In being parents? Do I parent my kids by walking with the Lord? In my work? Si Lord ba kasama ko? Or may mga tinatago tayo kay Lord? Walk in a manner worthy of the Lord. And it's not just about doing, but it's actually about pleasing the Lord. I'd like you to focus also on that word. No, It says, bearing fruit in every good work. Kita niyo ba yon? In verse 10, no? it says, bearing fruit in every good word. I'd like to just set aside time for this very quickly. How many of you want to have a fruitful life? Raise your hand. How many of you know that it is the Lord who makes us fruitful? Raise your hand. How many of you, when you look at your seatmate, mukha siyang kakaibang fruit? <laughs> Fruitfulness, if you think about it, when we picture being fruitful, ang iniisip natin most of the time is magandang buhay. Tama ba? Tama, tama, tama. Yes, they agree na parang, ay, fruitful ng buhay niya. Kaya nga, when we see others, no, ay, ang fruitful niya. Ganun ba ang definition natin ng fruitfulness? Yung, parang bless na bless siya ni Lord. Ang ganda ng, ang fru- Kasi I think, ang ang concept natin nun, yung, sa atin daw, sa mga Pilipino, di ba, meron tayong tinatawag na parang, ay, nalaglag yung prutas. Al- alam niya, yung pag nalaglag yung prutas, yung parang napikon, na bad trip, ganun, no? You have to understand, if you look at the, the science behind a tree, and this is important that you get, because we've been praying for a fruitful life, di ba? Sino yung pinagpipray nyo? Lord, make me fruitful naman. Ganun, Ganun ba? Or hindi, hindi kayo nagpipray. Di ba, lahat naman tayo, Lord, sana maging fruitful yung business ko. Di ba, have you said that once in your life? Sana maging fruitful yung marriage ko. Sana may fr- Okay, you have to un- understand this. Ang puno, kumukuha ng nutrients yan sa lupa at saka sa sa charades to. <laughs> sa kamay. No? Doon sa ulan, tsaka sa araw. Okay. Now, if the tree is, it grows, so umuulan, it gets nutrients from everywhere, from the ground, from the roots, it actually 
makes the tree grow. If it is overly nutrient, ano ba tawag doon? Pag sumobra na yung, ano, alam ni Tito Bonito, di ba? Pag sumobra na yung nutrients ng puno, alam nyo kung saan napupunta yung over, yung excess. Do you want to know where? Ha? Huh? Sa flower? Pwede. <laughs> Parang ating alamin. Okay. Pag umover ang nutrients ng isang puno, napupunta sa isang container at doon siya nag over Ang container na yon ang tawag doon, fruit. It's an excess of the nutrients of the tree. The fruit then are excess. And think about it. The fruit is an excess of the tree. Fruit is not meant for the tree, but is meant for others. I'd like you to have this perspective that a fruitful life is blessing others. Kaya pag nagpe-pray ko, Lord, sana maging fruitful. Baka di nyo nakikita. Kasi ginagamit kayo ng Lord para sa iba. This is not our preaching, but this is important. Why? Because as long and as time goes by, as we grow in the Lord, no, ganun din yun, parang puno, no? the Lord would give us His Word so that we will grow in the Lord. The more that we put our minds, fill our minds with the Word of God, with knowing more of Jesus, we apply it, we do the Word, we fill, we do the Word, our lives bear fruit in every good work. Ang nakikinabang iba. And that's why the question that I want to ask, is my life a fruitful life that others are blessed? Nakaka-bless ba? Ito ang gusto ni Paul for this church. To remain in Christ is to bear fruit that will last for others. Kaya I remember this verse, no, Pastor Josh, yung sinasaya niya, remain in me. That you may bear fruit. Second thing that I'd like you to take is this reality. Don't stop walking with Jesus. Don't stop knowing Him. And also don't stop walking with Him. I'll want, I want to clarify something. Ang buhay natin kay Lord will never end if we choose to know Him more and more. Because what we do here on earth is a preparation of what will happen in heaven. Kaya hindi po tayo matatapos makilala ang Panginoon. I've been a pastor for... Um, sige. Six, five years, six years, no? But I could actually say I'm just scratching the surface of what I know okay Lord and sometimes the only thing that's stopping us from continually knowing God and walking with God is a mindset like this ay nabasa ko na yan nabasa yung, yung devotion ko sabi dito um, ano ba to <laughs> sabi ng Bible ko yung kwentong ay nabasa ko na to next na you can actually be reading one passage and discover so much of God time and time and time again. Don't stop walking with Jesus. This is what Paul was saying. You have to fill your minds of Christ and continually obey the Lord by walking in His ways. I want to say this about the doing part no, for the Lord. Their issue was in that church, ito po yung issue nila no, ng mga believers in the Colossae Church. The Jewish believers were saying, oh, dahil part ka na ng church na to, ito requirement. Kailangan circumcised ka, kailangan gawin mo to, kailangan mag ano, ka ng sabat, kailangan hindi mo gawin to. They were given laws. And that's why for them, okay yung relationship nila kay Lord, pero feeling nila, ang daming kailangan gawin. 
And even in our church, sometimes people would tell you to do this. Oh, lang victory green hills ka na ba? Oy, alam mo ba kailangan required mag one to one? Mayroon sa nagsabi na baka ingat sa inyo ng ganun. May kulungan po tayo para sa mga nagsasabi ng ganun. Yung para siyang requirement. Ay, kailangan mag ganito ka. Tapos mag ganito ka. Yes, those are all good. But I want to say this. It's a way of discipling people, but it is not the only way. The doing has to be what God wants us to do in community. And this is scary because, just like last week, no, I alluded to this, there are times that we do things for the Lord, but it actually drives us away farther and farther from the Lord. Pwede yun. Ito yung sinasabi ni Pastor Josh. Pastor Josh preached a powerful word this morning at the 9 a.m. Sabi niya, we can actually be doing a lot of things for the Lord and nasiset aside na yung time kay Lord. What is important is we do what God calls us to do because that is walking in His ways. Di ba ang walking may kasabay? Kung kasabay natin si Lord as we study Him, ito po yung picture nung sinasabi ko yung point one, no? knowing more of God and walking with God. If we walk together, nagkikwentuhan kami ni Lord, no? yung para siya, friendship siya, di ba? You and the Heavenly Father. And as you talk, as you journey, meron siyang tinuturo sa, oh, yan, kausapin mo yan, pag-pray mo yan. It's a journey of discovering who He is. Grabe pala yung heart ni Lord. Pagka ganito, gusto niya makapag, ano, mashera ng gospel. Grabe yung heart ni Lord. Pag, the more that we know Him, the more that we respond to what He wants. No, that's the idea. Let's, let's jump to verse 12. Sabi niya, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. And I'd like to focus on that next verse. Sabi niya, for He rescued us from the dominion from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son this might be the most important part of this preaching and not only does paul let's try to backtrack why was paul writing this letter to the colossians church he wants them to continually grow in their faith so number one sabi niya no continually get to know your lord Continually get to know Christ. Not only that, continually walk with Him. Knowing and walking with Him. But, ito yung sinabi ni Paul. Paul says, you need to be reminded of what He has done. He would always bring us back to what Christ has accomplished to the cross. And the first thing that He uses is, He rescued us. Why is that word very important? Rescued. To be rescued is to put ourselves in a position that we cannot save ourselves. Ito yung first thing that God reminds, no? Paul reminds us, He has rescued us because we cannot rescue ourselves. Second, I'm gonna change the sequence. Sabi niya, um, the second part is found in verse 14. Sabi niya doon, In whom we have redemption and the forgiveness. We know that already. What does redemption mean? Binili na tayo ni Lord. No? And I'd like you to note this if you're taking notes. Alam nyo ba that one definition of lordship, ano ang definition ng lordship na alam natin? Lordship is rule and reign. No? Kung sino ang nagkakol ng shots. But another definition of lordship that is important that you need to know is ownership. Lordship is ownership. Ano ibig sabihin nun? Kung sino ang may-ari, siya ang magkocall ng shots. And so Christ, what did Christ do on the cross? He redeemed us. Ano ibig sabihin nun? Binili na tayo. Now we are owned by Christ. How many of you know, ma-offend ka, kunwari may binili, for example, nagbenta ako ng kotse. Okay. Kasi hindi ka na nagbebenta ng kotse, so pwede ko na illustration. For example, nagbenta ako ng kotse kay Mark. Mark, uh, bro, bilhin mo na yung kotse ko. Ano to? Um, Mercedes Bench. Ganda to. So, binili ni Mark. Sabi niya, Pastor, ako nabibili. Ano lang to? Ang halaga nila to, 5,000 pesos lang. So, binili niya. Okay. Imagine this. Who owns the car now? Mark. Okay. Nilipat ko yung LTO. Okay na. What if one day, sab- pumunta ako sa bahay ni Mark, may spare key ako. Kinuha ko yung kotse. Mikot ako ng village. Ikot ako. 
Tapos nakita ako ni Mark. Sabi ko lang kay Mark, Ma-offend ba si Mark? Hindi, pastor niya ako eh. Uy, joke lang, joke lang. Hindi, hindi. Sabi niya, oo, oh, oo, oh, oh, ma-offend ako, ma-offend ako. Ay. Who owns the car? Who used to own the car? Do I have a right to use it? No. Maybe if I ask, but bro, peram naman. Eh? Ito na, nabangga ko yung kotse. Nabangga, pag ganun ko, ah! Bangga, bro. Mafia eh. Yung mga pinapanood ko. Baba akong kotse. O Mark. If you are Mark, magagalit ka. Totoo? Naasar kayo? Hindi yung totoo lang. Mababad trip. Ibablock niyo ako sa Facebook. Babash niyo ako. Grabe, tita, ibabash mo ako. Sabi niyo, yes, yes. A lot of times, we forget that we are now owned by God. And we live our lives as if we are still the owners of our lives. It's funny that when, needed, when we needed a Savior, we said, Lord, bibig ko siya lahat. Salamat, sinib mo ko. But right after, it's as if it did not happen. You know, Lordship is change of ownership. If you go back to our verse a while ago, it's in verse 13. He rescued us, we know that. But you have to understand, we were once in the domain of darkness. Show verse 13. We were once in the domain of darkness. What does that mean? Slaves po tayo ng kasalanan. That we cannot do anything about it. As much as we want to live our lives the right way, unfortunately, we cannot break free. And this is the Lordship of God. He transferred us from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of His Son. I, in 2001, received Christ as my Savior. But I did not receive Him then as my Lord. He saved me. I worshiped God. I enjoyed church. But the more I studied the word and the more that I felt like, di ko kayang ibigay to. Di ko kayang gawin to. Ang hirap nito. Bakit ko i-give up ang pagsisigarilyo ko? Eh, ang pinapauso ko naman yung mangga. It didn't, it didn't make sense. Why do I have to give up this? And so I lived my life dual. There are things that I allowed God to be the Lord, but there are things that I allowed Francis to be the Lord. I'm going to borrow an illustration from Pastor Josh. He said this, when we say Jesus is Lord, you might deny it, you might not believe it, you might not agree with it, but he is still the Lord. We are not the ones who make Him God. He is already the Lord. And it's funny, tayo po, no, in our culture in victory, how do we start our prayer? What's the first word? What's the first word that when we pray? When I, oh, bro, can I pray? Like, Real, can you pray? Ano sabi niya? Lord. Napansin niya? There in churches, iba, they start with, Father God. Tama? Hindi, iba-iba. Sa Dabao, dahil joke lang. It's funny that we call Lord, Lord, but He is not the Lord of our lives. May pray tayo, no? Lord, kung maririnig ko siguro si God, ako ba tinatawag mo? O sarili mo? <laughs> Lord, 
Lord is a good reminder of who He is. The one who calls the shots. You know, going back to my story, I found myself saved, but farthest from the Lord. I needed Him again to save me from a current situation. Then I realized, I need you as my Lord. You know, Lordship is not us making Him Lord. Hindi yung, oh, sige, ikaw na Lord. But it's actually this. And this is the operative word that is important that you will take home for today. This is the word. Surrender. Say that with me. Surrender. Surrender your life to the Lordship of Jesus. This was the formula of Paul in chapter 1. Not only do you know more of Him, ang ganda no, inuna ni Paul, kilalanin mo muna si Lord. Because the more that you know Him, the more that you would want to do His will. And I'm reminding you, continually surrender your life to the Lord. Lord, di ko kaya. Lord, ikaw lang. Lord, kung ako lang to, I will corrupt things, I will destroy things, but if it is you who will lead my life, I know that we will be okay. I'm gonna, and, and I want to give you an assurance for those, for those who are hesitant, no? talaga ba, ibibigay ko yung buhay ko kay Lord? Siya ang magiging in charge? Siya magsasabi kung anong gagawin ko? Yes! But this is the assurance of this kind of life. When we allow God to be Lord of our lives, guess what? He wants the best for you. And this is in His way and not our way. In His sovereignty, He would allow us to be led to a blessed life. But it's in His way, not our way. Amen? Let me try to summarize that. We are called to continually know more of Jesus. That's important. No? Continually learn of Christ. His ways, His life, His death, His resurrection. Number two, don't stop walking in the ways of the Lord. Ito po ang Lordship, no? Doing what the Word says. Following Christ. And this is the biggest challenge of all. Continually surrendering our lives to Him. This might be for the small things, but also for the big things. Imagine this, no? In your big and small decisions, have you asked God for permission? Or it's always the other way around? Kadalasan ganito, no? And ano to, I want to say this out of love. And I journey people with this. Pastor, ito na yung gagawin namin. Okay, bakit mo nasabing yan gagawin mo? Kasi feel ko eh, na parang ito na eh. Anong na-feel mo? Di ko alam, basta feel ko, ito na talaga. So, anong gagawin mo? Magpe-pray na ako ngayon na i-bless ni Lord. I'd like you to think about it the other way around. Because God will bless always His will. So take time more in seeking the will of God rather than doing it on your own and asking God to bless it. Parang sinatgana natin si Lord nun. It's the other way around. Seek the will of God and then everything will follow. Amen? Lastly, because my wife is here, my beautiful wife, no, it's galit, no? I always um, uh, am encouraged whenever yung VG, yung mga ladies that are with Pam, niloloko na niya sila. Si, uh, pagka, ano mo, nakikita kita na, na ano ako eh. Um, si Pam would always, Pam, my wife, is known for this question. Diba? Ati Pam! So, may tatak mo, Ati Pam, gano'n nga. Anong sabi ni Pam? Anong sabi ni God? Anong sabi ni Lord? And so ngayon, di na sila nagtatanong. <laughs> Kay Lord na sila din na may and, and I like that because that's who we are as people of God. When we say we follow Jesus, what does that mean? We ask Him first. Lord, what do you want me to do in this situation? Lord, what do you want me to do as I journey in this situation. It was always about Jesus. That's why that Jesus period is such a powerful reminder 
that everything will be by Him, for Him, and through Him. Amen? Can I ask everyone to stand? We're going to close in prayer. Reminder, um, the registration area is at the right after yung elevator. No? Just turn left. No? We have a room there for the registration for our 40th conference. Uh, I'd like to pray. And obviously, I hope you know by now, no, ano yung prayer natin? Salam. Surrender. <laughs> Today, I'd like to invite all of you, wherever you are in your faith, you might have been following Christ, or maybe naglalaban, parang ako na lately, ah. Or maybe you really want to start allowing Christ to be Lord. He is your Savior in the past, but now you want to experience a life that is under His Lordship, following this true King, this true King of all. Let me add to that preaching. No? What Paul was saying is, yes, there were other gods in that area, but I hope you know that it is only one true God. And so, you might actually be confused today. Ito yung finafalo kung ways. I'd like to invite all of us with this one word, surrender. Lord, as we surrender our lives once again to you today, we might be going through a challenge or maybe it's just a mundane uh, week for us. Parang, okay naman. But Lord, let Allow us to answer the question that has been imposed to us when we started this preaching. Why are you worthy to be Lord of our lives? And thank you, Lord, for that reminder. Because of what Christ has done for us. And knowing that is enough. Lord, if you have done that for us to send Jesus to die for our sins so that we could be forgiven and have peace with you. Panginoon, Lord, we not only want Jesus as our Savior, but today we make a decision as the decision again to recommit our lives and surrender our lives to His Lordship. Lord, let this be our act of Jesus' period. Lord, let this be our one step of faith this year that we say, Lord, Jesus, be the Lord of my life. Lord, I want to know you more. I want to follow you more. But first and foremost, Lord, we surrender and give our allegiance back to you. The King of kings and the Lord of lords. Be the Lord of all our lives. Thank you, Jesus, for reminding us that you have this will for us that is the best for us. Lord, allow us to live a fruitful life in the right definition of it. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we glorify you today. Salamat, Panginoon. Lord, as we send them out to this world where a lot of people need you, Lord, allow them to be fruitful and be a blessing to them. Lord, give them boldness. Give them strength. Give them peace. Provide for them this week. Protect them, Lord God. Heal them for those who are sick. Lord, you are a faithful God. Let it be Jesus' period in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Let's give glory to God. Don't forget to register. Happy Sunday, everyone. See you next week.